Hello, everybody, and welcome to In From Japan, or episode 81 <laughs> of the In From Japan podcast. Uh, the podcast where we talk about the latest news on Japan developed games and other things in relation to them. Available on YouTube and in most places podcasts can be found. As always, I'm your host, Errol Moss, and with me is my co-host, the Phenomenon from Suriname, Jason Corder. Hey, hey. And, uh... First, we have uh, housekeeping. Check out our interview with uh, Godzilla and Ultraman comic artist Matt Frank. He, he's also worked on Gamera comics and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, he did the cover for the Daimajin trilogy that released recently on Blu-ray. Oh, that's nice. Lots of stuff. We talked, nerded out about a bunch of Tokusatsu stuff. And then I found out he vo- in like a... I need to confirm him with that because mm-hmm. this was according to like Wiki, Wikizilla or something. Mm-hmm. So I need to confirm with him. But in in some Ultraman game, he voiced my fa- one, like my favorite Ultraman villain, Ultraman Belial. Oh, that's cool. So I, I've, and I never I meant to bring him up because you know he's watched a lot of Ultraman. So I meant to bring him up, but I just it just never happened. And then after I saw that, I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could always do a part two interview. Nothing wrong with that. That is true. That is true. Yeah. I told him he can be on Kaiju Zoo. Yeah, that'd when be his cool. Schedule allows. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you? Anyway, did you also like? Um, I I mean I don't know if you follow a lot of comic book artists or uh, artists in general. Not many. <laughs> but do, do you, I follow artists? Do you kind of have a different appreciation for the work he does? Um, I mean, I have. Because one of the questions I was asking him is, was about, like, how, like, tokusatsu has kind of really, I don't want to say taken off, but, like, internationally between, like, the the Power Rangers comics, the Ultraman comics, the, um, He's, you know, the Godzilla yeah. comics that have been ongoing, the ma- more mainstream comics that have, like, the superhero comics that have taken a lot of inspiration from tokusatsu, mm-hmm. like Radiant Black and that red red girl or whatever it was red, that it was on the kickstarter a few months ago volcano girl or something like that yeah something like that and uh and the new dark hawk taking inspiration from tokusatsu um just i i, I talked to him about that and how how like not only that but tokusatsu is so much uh so much more accessible now mm-hmm. between shout factory and and all these Blu-ray releases mm. and, and all that. Okay. That's cool. That's um, cool. But, uh, yeah, go check that out. Uh, so we're going to move on to the Japanese games we've been playing. Uh, I have been playing Scarlet Nexus. I don't really have anything bad or good to say. Well, what's good is it's not a bad game. <laughs> <laughs> but like I, it's not like some amazing thing like oh this game is so fun it's like it's it's fine yeah there was a cool part where there you got like a spe- specific flat piece of debris mm-hmm. in this ice area mm-hmm. and you basically use it as like a hoverboard and you like knock down enemies oh, it's nice. only like a sh- brief thing in in like certain parts of that certain area so far but still like it's one of those things where it's just like oh that was fun to do so kind of like a Kind of like in games where you, in other games where you, where you're like sliding down someplace. Yeah. Or so it, that it just gave me a similar feeling. So overall, you are enjoying yourself. Right. Oh, okay. And the uh, bond episodes, which are kind of like social links, where with your teammates, you kind of just um, you just talk to them about something. Sometimes you go, uh, you go do a mission with them because you need to go find a certain item or something. Mm-hmm. But most of the time, it's just you know cutscenes, and you can skip the like you can skip them and get because you get benefits after which is like their special attack gets boosted or they have some or it gets some extra feature like they'll protect you from an attack uh at certain times and stuff like that yeah but what i found myself doing with some of them is like i would skip them but you see like the last bit of it of the conversation and then it's like oh now i want to know what happened because that sounds like it was interesting so are you now <laughs> going to go through all of them yeah i mean they only pop up sometimes oh, they don't okay. always uh, and you you can only do them it seems like you could only unlock them at certain times like you can't always do all of them at once mm-hmm. 
it, it depends on where you are in the game, it seems. Oh, okay. I may be wrong about that, yeah, but that's yeah, just, yeah. for my playthrough, that's what it seemed like. No, I get you. Um, because once you do, like, do it up to a certain point, you might not be able to do it anymore until you progress more through the game. Uh, but then you can also give them gifts, and I don't usually have gifts for them. I don't know if there's a guide for it, or... Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's a guide for it, but I don't know how much that affects uh, stuff. Like, if it's an alternative to the Bond episode, or if it just has a other bonuses. Like, I gave one a squash racket that I didn't know I had, mm -hmm. and then she was... Uh, and then, and then now she's always in the weight room using it. <laughs> so, so, so I'm like that. That's that. that that's it, it. Make make. It feels like some of your choices matter yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So that's nice. Uh, last night I also played a, a little bit of the Monster Hunter Stories Two update. Oh, cool. So I did the with some uh, just some random players. Mm -hmm. So the the thing is, uh. The, the ticket system, you get you have normal tickets, uh, rare tickets, and super rare tickets. And super rare tickets give you a higher chance of finding a rare egg. Like, or the rarer eggs. Uh, and I can't, I can't remember if they're needed for these Deviant Quests or not. Mm -hmm. um, but you have a higher chance of find, getting a good egg from it. And so we... So I went... Uh, so I got some super... I had to grind for some bottle caps because... The only way to get uh, super rare tickets is if you have 100 bottle caps. So you have to go in these things called Everdens and um, just go around them and find them. Luckily, I hadn't explored a lot of Everdens yet. So I I got enough for those two two monsters. Uh, and then you can find bottle caps in the dens that you do in co-op. Oh, so it, okay. you don't find as many. It's not like, it's not like you're going to have 100... And then you go do a do a co-op online quest, and then you'll have almost a hundred again. It's more like you spend that a hundred, and then you go do the quest, and maybe you'll have like ten to twenty, like twenty or so. Also, bottle caps are rewards mm. for these quests as well, so that that helps. I just wish they were a little easier to get. But so I got the Bolt Reaver Astalos and the Hellblade Glavinus, two deviant monsters from Monster Hunter Cross, mm -hmm. I believe. And their armor looks really cool. I I, <laughs> I was just like I was just like not expecting it mm -hmm. because I hadn't I don't think I ever fought them when I played Generations. So I was like, oh this armor so like I get one, I get the Bolt Reaver Astalos, and I was like Oh, this armor is so cool. I'm going to start wearing the layered armor of this now. And then I get the Hellblade Glavinous one, which is way more my speed cuz it's like that it's like that almost like evil looking armor. It's like black and and red and glowy. Yeah. Are you <laughs> enjoying it more than Rise cuz it sounds like it? I mean, yeah, for sure. But that's just cuz, you know, I'm more into turn-based. A lot of people dropped Rise. Mm. Um mm. I'll get back to Rise at some point. Okay. So but you're not going for the right now, layered armor? The layered armor in Rise? Yeah, the the Okami one. Oh, I'll probably do that at some point. Oh, okay. Because I like the crossover stuff. But that's for the like a pa the Palamute. It's not like a huge deal to me. Mm, that's true. I'm not like a huge Okami fan or anything. Oh, um, that's a bummer. It's cool. Yeah. I played a little bit of the DS one, Oka Okami Den. Yeah, but but that's kind. I think well, I wouldn't say different, but it's it's not. I played a little bit of Okami HD as well. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, it's just I don't know. It's not really my thing. No, I get it. I that get much. It. Um, but yeah, I haven't been uh, playing. I've mostly been playing Scarlet Nexus and just trying to finish that. I am like ten hours into Yuito's story. And I think the, how long to beat said is about like 24 and a half hours. So I'm guessing I have a little while to go for Yuito's story. And then the rest of it will be, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Kasane's story. So we'll see how that works out. So you, you've been playing the Scarlet Nexus demo? Uh-oh.
Oh, this time I disconnected. Stop. I'm going to let it go to 10.54 so I can match it up a little better. No, no, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to wait, because that'll just make it easier for me to unpause. Okay, sorry, we had some uh, random technical difficulties there. We've been having a lot of weird issues with that lately. Uh, what I was about to ask was, Jason, so you've been playing more of the Scarlet Nexus demo? Yeah, because I have an an everlasting backlog, and I can't just... As, as do we all. I can't justify a full-price game at the moment, not that... Uh, Scarlet Nexus is bad by any means, uh, at least from what I've seen um, uh, with regards to the reviews and, and reception online. So I'm, I'm just kind of... Uh, Check out our uh, our friend Michael Hyam's review yeah, like that over one. on GameSpot. <laughs> uh, so so I'm, I have the demo uh, and I kind of wanted to re-experience all of that, so I did. Um, I'm making my way through Yuito's uh, route and it's, it's it's a lot of fun um I'm, I'm now experimenting more with the abilities and the combat and uh kind of not thinking too much about placement and where i'm supposed to grab the the next item to throw at an enemy i'm like going through it very naturally and i assume that's what i i do love doing yeah. that like just the just the Cut, cut, slash, 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 throw. Yeah, exactly. Slash, 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 throw. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, or throw, throw, throw. I'm kind of just <laughs> just doing that a little bit, um, preparing for when I do eventually get the full game, which I guess is probably going to be like the end of the year uh, at the rate we're going. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Hopefully, it'll be on sale. Yeah, fingers for crossed. For a good amount. Uh, besides that, I've been playing the Pokemon Unite uh, version on Switch. I don't know if the the mobile version is released yet, uh, but yeah, it's it's a, a very fun game. It's it's very well made. I was having my doubts because, you know, I was thinking, oh, it's gonna be a very watered down MOBA experience. But no, it's a very fleshed out, uh, well thought out MOBA experience. Um, you have the Pokemon in various roles, like defensive, healer, uh, up close, and ranged. And uh, it's it's really well balanced. Um, I want to say, Ex except yeah. for the, the well, slightly. A lot of people would very dis uh, would disagree yeah. I, I, was with you I was getting to that. I was getting to that. So <laughs> uh, there are some slight pay to win aspects where you buy items, you give to your. Uh, Pokemon that increases stats, but it's a MOBA. Stats don't mean much if you're not able to utilize most those people, stats. Besides certain streamers, most people probably aren't paying hundreds of dollars to get all those items. Yeah. You know? Also, if you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna uh, buy the incorrect uh, items for your. A particular build so it might not even benefit you um, mm. uh, unless you study up or, or use a guide to, to, to know what's up but I'm also thinking when you're playing a MOBA like Wild Rift Dota or League of Legends um, when you're in game and you have enough uh, gold coins you then can buy items within the match to buff your stats so it's not. It's not like you Pokemon Unite is doing something all that different. Um, but maybe the long term implications could be different. I don't know. I, I haven't. The book. The game's like been out for barely a month, so it, it's it's kind of hard to say how it's gonna affect the the meta. So uh, so I played a few games, mm -hmm. and I. While it was fun, I kind of found, found myself getting bored after a little while, even after using different Pokemon. It just kind of... I don't know. It just it, it just seems like, for me, it just seems like, like, like that kind of game that's just like, 
all right, that was fun for a few games. Now I want to go focus on something else. That's, it's like I'm just, hmm. but again, I'm never, I've never been that into mobas. That's interesting because I do like mobas. Um, I just don't play long enough to uh, get really good at them because the MOBA community can be pretty toxic. Uh, and I don't need... Like, Final Fantasy fourteen is already enough for me, doing all those different, having to focus on your class yeah. and, and everything. But even and then, role. as a MOBA, it's very stripped down. It's it's not that intensive. Um, right. It just It's just like... I don't know, the style of it, it's like... I like how it's like a pick up and play mm-hmm. thing and just, you know, whatever. It can be fun, but I, I just get bored of it super fast. I find myself getting bored mm. of it pretty fast after a few games. It is, uh, well, if you're not competitive minded, uh, it might not be the thing for you. Uh, I happen to do uh, like these games, so I, I might stick around longer. That is, if I can find the time to invest into the game. Um, then I'll stick around longer. Um, yeah, as I said, the, the pay to win aspects might give you pause, but if you like zoom out and view how other MOBAs handle these, um, these purchases, it might not be all that different in the end. And even so, um, I was playing the first match without having bought any items and I still came out on top of the, the pack. Like, we were on the winning team, and I still uh, had, like, twice as many points as the next person on the team, at the very least. So, if you know what you're doing, you're going to be very... It's also Mm -hmm. very weird that you can't see your score, or you can't see... No, was it your score or the team score? There was something you weird can't, I noticed when I was you playing can't, it. Well, from a glance, you can't really tell who's ahead or not. At least from the first match I've played. Uh, right. But at the end of the, the match, you do get the scorecard. You do see... I know, but it's just... It's weird. You have to like pay attention to the announce... Not the announcer. Yeah, the announcer. I think... Or the it, screen. The thing that pops up on the screen. That and the minimap, I think. Because I do think that the towers indicate how many people have scored or um, who is ahead. Um... And you can tell by um, the creeps that uh, spawn after you, you defeat a tower or break down a tower. Um, all in all, this is a very fun game. Uh, well made. Uh, Mira. Uh, I think it, it'll have some staying power. Uh, let's see how they can foster the community. I'm already in love with the cosmetics they have for sale. Uh, <laughs> like, I think... Uh, was it Lucario? I think it was Lucario. He kind no Greninja. It was Greninja. Greninja has kind of this uh, swimsuit slash Tokusatsu suit. Yeah, I saw I, that. I, that was very cool. And you know, Greninja is already kind of Tokusatsu inspired or Ninja inspired, mm. so it, it really yeah. totally fits. Um, yeah, I, I can see myself uh, spending money just for the cosmetics, I, and yeah, that's the intended goal, I guess. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully, I can uh, play a few other matches. But besides that, I've been playing Monster Hunter Rise because I I had to have the Okami layered armor for my Palamute, uh, and then I just dropped it dropped it, it after that. It's a very you know mm-hmm. you know what would be cool if because you know in uh, in Monster Hunter Stories one mm-hmm. they did a uh, Epona from Zelda yeah. as a monster. Yeah. But it was just a, I, I believe it was pretty much just the same as an Aptonoth, but they just, you know, changed what it mm-hmm. looked like. Since they already have Palamute in Stories 2, mm-hmm. they could put Amaterasu <laughs> if they wanted to do a, a crossover like that. Uh, I mean, the layered armor more or less turns your Palamute into Amaterasu. It, it's not like, yeah. uh, uh, like uh, how do I say this? like armor that uh is reminiscent of amaterasu it's like you're really no yeah that's what but but i'm saying like since it it would be so if it, they did they would do what they did with the pony on stories one mm-hmm. they could do because uh, in uh in stories two with the palamute because that it's already there oh you mean you know? for stories two 
yeah, yeah. That it could be possible. Uh, no, Epona wasn't in the main. <laughs> no, I mean in stories too. Like if if you do yeah. um, Amaterasu in in there, but yeah, it could be possible. But as yeah. for Rise, I don't think they're thinking about that. Right no, now. <laughs> as for Rise, um, the Okami event is fairly simple. You just have to collect twenty-one packages, if I'm not mistaken. They're strewn out all over the first area, and it's very straightforward it's it's whatever but you get a cool reward out of it that's that's nice yeah uh, no it's like Masuki no no uh, added story event but yeah it's a cool thing um will yeah. i dip into monster hunter rise again who's to say i'm i, th- I think uh what you have with mobas being a bit repetitive uh and and you have with monster probably Hunter. because i i can get i get that it can be hard to play for like a long time yeah i mean it's it's not a bad game it's not badly designed it's just oh i'm going to go slay another monster what i've been doing yeah it's it's definitely better to play in spurts yeah in yeah so opinion. i i might uh revisit it when i feel like it uh but yeah that's uh, what i've been playing i've also kind of restarted grandia again uh, <laughs> oh no! I don't know how far I'm going to get into it this time, but uh, yeah, it's it, it's something. Um, I still enjoy the game. Uh, the art style is great. Uh, yeah, I hope to finish it one day, uh, but we'll see. We'll see how far I get. Uh, okay. Next up, we're going to move on to the In from Japan J list. Recent video game related entertainment news. So first, we have Digimon Franchise gets new fall TV anime, new Digimon Adventure Zero Two anime film. This is by Egan Liu for Anime News Network. The DigiFest 2021 event announced on Sunday that the Digimon franchise will have a new television anime and new anime film. The Digimon Ghost Game television anime series will premiere this fall on Fuji TV and other channels. The teaser visual says, Holograms? Ghosts? <laughs> Uh, the Digimon that appear in the new TV anime are from left to right below. Angoramon, which looks like a weird Yeti thing. Gammamon, which is a little Triceratops guy. And Jellymon, which is like a jellyfish person. That's neat. The new film will tell... Oh, the Digimon Adventure Zero 2. The new film will tell a story about Daisuke Motomiya, Davis Motomiya in English, and voiced by... In the English dub, he is voiced by the same voice actor who voiced Rock Lee in the English dub of Nar- Naruto and was also the Jetix announcer back in the day. Oh, that's cool. Um, and the other characters from Digimon Adventure Zero Two anime. Director Tomohiso Taguchi and writer Akatsuki Yamatoya are reuniting from Digimon Adventure Last Evolution Kizuna, which is a great movie, and I like it so much better than all of the Tri movies, mm. to work on the new film. There- Below is an English subtitle super early teaser trailer for the film. Like the teaser trailer, the film's teaser visual reads, The new Digimon movie is about Zero Two. Now the door to adventure opens. And there's a quote, I'm the first person to ever partner with the Digimon. So I don't know if this movie is going to retcon something or what. Or going to do something else. Uh, it's Pre- hard to say. It's hard to say, given that we just had the Digimon Adventure reboot. Yeah. <laughs> or I think it's still currently airing, but it's almost done. Um, the Digimon Adventure Zero Two was the first direct television anime sequel to the first Digimon Adventure series. Although it featured a new set of main characters, it aired from April 2000 to March 2001 in Japan, and then it aired from August 2000 to May 2001 in the United States on Fox Kids. I remember that. Mm. The Digimon Adventure Last Evolution Kizuna sequel film told the last adventure of Tai and Agumon. It opened in Japan in February 21st, 2020, and then rolled out overseas last year and this year. And if you are a Digimon fan, it will give you all the feels. Yeah. Um, my brother watched it and he was pretty impressed by the movie. Uh, said, uh, <laughs> said as much. I caught him bawling his eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not nothing like that. But uh, yeah, I kind of want to go through the try movies first before I attempt Kizuna. Although you don't really <sighs> need it. Hey man, <laughs> at least the movies are better paced than the TV show, because 
Mm, oh boy. Not the way they're uploaded on Crunchyroll. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Um. But uh, yeah. I I always I always say, oh, when you watch Digimon Try and after you watch the third one, because it gives it a sad ending, mm -hmm. but actually like kind of leaves more of an impact. Yeah. <laughs> um. But then, of course, then Last Evolution Kizuna doesn't really make that much sense. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But so. they barely mention. They don't even mention anything. Uh, spoil light spoilers. They don't even really mention anything that happened in Try. There's like a cameo by one character at the end, and that's it. I, they don't even like mention the events. I guess that makes sense because uh, I think Kizuna is more like a thematic movie as opposed to right. Try being like a uh, them I, revisiting the original cast. Right. Uh huh. I think I think Kizuna kind of does it does a lot of things that Try was trying to do mm -hmm. like more concisely yeah. and just like better. In I I think it's I think it's really good. Yeah, <laughs> it has references to other Digimon like Digimon Adventure stuff. Um, again, I don't want to ruin it, but but certain things I was like, hey, that's like this thing, <laughs> or that's like this thing. I was like, oh, they they're really hitting me right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, Try did not do that for me, really. <laughs> no, I, I watched the first ten episodes or so, and I was like, so. So that's like the first two movies. I was so bored. Like, why is this pace like this? Whoa. Oh, you were watching it on like yeah. I was are, were you watching on Crunchyroll? It? I was watching it on Crunchyroll. Yeah, yeah. It's so not paced so very well slow. the way they separated yeah. it. Like the dig the Digivolve uh, sequences are cool and all, but that's so that's like the only reason I'd be watching. I think you. It. I think you can watch some of the Digimon Tri movies on Prime. Mm. Like like they're they're on Prime Video. And you don't have to rent them. At least a few of them are. Uh, I'll I'll give it a check. Uh, yeah. Again, I don't know if in your region mm -hmm. it would. <laughs> Probably not, but <laughs> I'll know. check. That's always a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next up, uh, Common Rider Revised Press Conference Recap: Cast and Story Details Confirmed. To this is by Paladin <laughs> for Toku Nation. Toei has concluded their annual Common Rider press conference, introducing the world to the third rider of the Reiwa era, Common Rider Revice. A sinister cult who worship demons known as the Dead Mans. Um. Alright, uh. Alright. Don't rip off Dead Man Wonderland now. <laughs> has developed the power of a strange artifact called the v stomp v stamp to awaken the devil within humanity by awakening the devil creates a monster known as a dead man huh. the cult has three active members that start aguilera played by you yui asakura ortega played by hayata seki and julio played by kuroto hachijojin the dead man seek to reawaken their ancient master Watching the Dead Man's Cult is a scientific research group called Phoenix. This agency decides to create new technology based on the legendary Kamen Rider franchise to save the world from demons. Genius scientist George Karasaki, portrayed by Hamao Noritaka, develops a new rider system based on the V-Stamp, the Revice Driver. Each V-Stamp revealed so far features the power of a past Kamen Rider fused with an animal spirit. The current V-Stamp setups include... Common Rider Revice, T Rex, Common Rider Decade, Megalodon, Common Rider XA, Jackal, Common Rider Gaim, Praying Mantis, Common Rider Forze, Gorilla, Common Rider Den O, Mammoth, Common Rider Double Falcon, Common Rider Phase, Pterosaur, Common Rider Zeo, Brontosaur, and Common Rider Kuga, Lion. Young Iki Igarashi, played by Kentaro Maeda, works at his family's bathhouse when he is forced into a confrontation with his own inner devil, Vice. A deal between the two allows them to use the Revice driver to transform into the next generation of heroes, Kamen Rider Revy and Kamen Rider Vice. Together they will work to with Phoenix to stop the Dead Man's Cult. Iki is determined to protect his family and younger siblings, while Vice merely wants to be set free. Uh, Kamen Rider Revice's theme song is titled Live Devil and will be performed by the group The Ice, with voice actor Subaru Kimura, who also portrays Vice, assisting on vocals. Was it... One of the... I know one of the actors 
was a was also a comedian and had kind of had by western standards has some very problematic comedy from the past that western fans have kind of been arguing about oh no so just be wary about that wary of that if you go into looking stuff up on like social media so milkshake duck yeah but it's 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 weird because like i don't know how far it is in the past i don't know that many details about Uh it but you know people arguing about it um but otherwise you know this this is interesting common writer but with like with some prehistoric things and some Mm -hmm. you know modern animals it's an interesting mix of things no i get it um speaking of more common writer stuff common writer and ultraman vital bracelet pre-orders are open this is by kite stenbuck for silicon era bandai has opened pre-orders for vital bracelet characters for common writer and ultraman it will officially release the virtual character raising devices in late 2021 both vital bracelets will be available for pre-order until september 6 2021 and cost 6,490 yen, roughly $60. Development for these devices comes from the Digimon Vital Bracelet. The wearable device will let users raise virtual characters and create and creatures creatures <laughs> creatures by doing physical activities in real life. The Vital Bracelet character series will have the same improvements as the newer Digivice V mo- model, such as sleep mode. To distinguish other franchise Digi devices i said digivice <laughs> from digimon bandai will provide a type of input card the common rider and ultraman devices will use a new set of items called vbm cards the non-digimon franchises will also have a separate mobile app bandai does not guarantee compatibility for inserting a dim card into a vital bracelet character's device and a vbm card into a digimon vital bracelet two vital bracelet models are available exclusively on premium bandai the vital bracelet characters common rider 50th edition will come with a vbm card containing 10 mass riders from the showa era including amazon and sky rider the vital bracelet characters ultraman 55th edition will have a different card featuring the six ultra brothers that's ultraman ultra seven ultra mantaro uh the I forgot the other one. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not up to... I don't know old school Ultraman that well. Uh, regular models that are more widely available will include cards from other titles, such as Kamen Rider Kuga and Ultraman Tiga. Um, Bandai will first release the Vital Bracelet character's Ultraman 55th edition in November 2021. The Kamen Rider one will follow in December 2021. Pre-orders are open until September 6th. So I did pre-order the second run of the Digimon one, but it won't come until November. Mm. But it was a lot cheaper than getting, uh, trying to get a, one of the ones that came out already, which is like already twice the price by resellers. Now, <laughs> d- so, does the fine print include like the text that says does not include Henshin transformations? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's interesting because for su- for like the common writers that since it's the older common writers in Ultraman, mm-hmm. it's kind of weird because they don't have different forms the way the mod the more modern ones mm. do. So I don't know how that's gonna work. Although if it expire inspi- helps inspire more people to exercise, you know, there you go. Yeah, like I was thinking about the Digimon one and how it digivolves based on your activity level. So right, <laughs> if you don't move, the Digimon dies, and you know. That's a good. That's yeah. a good incentive to keep on moving. Right. It's one like a good incentive to exercise too. If you can't get like a, a a regular pet for whatever reason. It's it's kind of funny that Pokemon hasn't um, jumped on this again. At least not since yeah, not since the Pokemon. Yeah, like, which those are pretty hard to get now. I yeah, think. it could have been like uh, an added uh, uh, mode in Pokemon Go, like choose your favorite pokemon walks with you I think, and it gains experience like that oh i thought there was something like that <sighs> yeah but you kind of have to I, have to have your app open at all times oh and that probably drains the battery yeah a ton. if i'm not mistaken at least yeah i don't play i haven't played pokemon go since like 2016 so yeah <laughs> you know um 
or no, I think I played it a little a little after just because once once um once the Johto Pokemon started showing up, I had to get a Cyndaquil, mm. Cyndaquil, and make sure I, I just had that as my partner Pokemon. I think <laughs> I stopped playing right before the pandemic hit. Yeah. Um. The next Tokusatsu thing is Ultraman RB or Rube or Red Blue streaming on now streaming on Tokusatsu. That is the third or fourth most recent Ultraman series. Trigger is the one currently airing. Uh, Zet was the last one. The one before that was Taiga, and then RB was right before Taiga, I believe. Mm. There's no currently no way to access Taiga outside of Japan right now. Well, no official way. I was about to say, there's always a way. Um. So yeah, that's good. Yeah. More stuff. Uh. Next up. Comic Cat 99 to be held in late December 2021 at Tokyo Big Site. This is by Kazuma Hashimoto for Silicon Era. The official Comic Cat Twitter account has revealed that the Comic Cat 99 event will be held in late December at the Tokyo Big Site Exhibition Center. Originally, Comic Cat 99 was set to appear in May 2021 due to the situation surrounding COVID 19. However, the event was postponed and had, to, had the tentative schedule of winter 2021. Comic Cat 99 will now be held from December 30th to December 30, 31st, 2021. An official statement detailed the reasoning for the delay and the plans regarding the new dates. Additionally, COVID-19 restrictions and guidelines will be put in place and followed regarding the amount of visitors that can attend the event. While the limitation of attendees was one of the primary reasons Comic Cat 99 was postponed, the event runners will comply with mandates in order to for the event to run in December 2021. The statement mentions that even that the event holders plan on accepting as many inten- attendees as possible as long as they do not violate the regulations that are currently in place. The statement also mentions that the progression of the COVID-19 vaccine's availability contributed to the decision to move forward with the event. However, the statement does not say that the postponement of Comic Cat 99 could happen again if the situation surrounding COVID-19 worsens. Well, we'll see what happens. It's not until December, so mm. they uh, got some time. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, let me. Uh, I just needed to put my headset okay. in the charger real quick. No, that's fine. All right. All right. So, oh, this is not working. Hang okay. on. Okay. Okay, I might as well vamp and like talk about a manga or anime. Um, no, I, I I think I got okay. it now. How, how it's, di- it's being weird. How dare you cut into my vamping time? It's being weird and not connecting for some reason. Yeah. Well, no, go 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 ahead and vamp. I'm gonna get the other okay. cord. Okay. Vamping time. So, um, humble bundle has a manga bundle on sale and if i'm not mistaken for 25 bucks you can get a lot of manga it's like a lot of manga like uh, it's probably more than 20 volumes in total uh you have cage of eden um you have uh, i stand on a million lives there was one more i was interested in i, I tweeted it out but um, the gist of it is a lot of good manga uh, it centers around the theme of isekai and your your love or displeasure of the term isekai uh, might vary uh, but it's it's enjoyable you don't you don't have to be the biggest fan to enjoy, okay. enjoy the thing that it's trying to present but you know try it Good thing I'm getting a new headset because I have to. It's one of those things where the charger got kind of looser over time, mm-hmm. and while it is charging, it keeps falling out. So I kind of have to hold it. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, and my other one, is, my other cord that I can use is too short. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'll just have to do this for the rest of the podcast. Good thing we're not on camera. <laughs> that's that's definitely something uh, to consider <laughs> moving forward. I mean, I'm getting a new headset, so it'll be fine. Yeah. Um. So next up is uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, 
his uh, Jason's uh, uh, talk about manga. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think we should give it a name eventually. Give it a set in Jason's manga corner. Yeah, manga minute. Jason's manga minute. J- Jason's manga mania minute. Yeah. It never lasts um, a minute. It's always like five or so. <laughs> uh, so moving on to recommended content, uh, we have Ergo Proxy: Purpose in the Apocalypse by Matthew Rowe for Anime News Network. Shy Matheson interview: Dragon Quest XI and Silvando by Austin King for Screen Rant. How accessibility at the summer's gaming events stack up by Grant Stoner for Wired. Screeners, where equ- equity is still missing in Hollywood by Jill Pantosi for Variety. I put this because our friend Kate Sanchez talks has been talking a bit about this. Mm, okay. um, Neku and Rindo took fashion tips from the three wise monkeys in The World Ends With You by George Yang for NME. And an interview, the great Ace Attorney's voice actors for Ryonosuke Susa- and Susato, also by George Yang, but for Polygon. He's been killing it, I guess. Yeah, I was just about to say. <laughs> um, next is time for the news rundown. Uh, so I'll let uh, our bearer of bad news and Shinigami take it away. Bankai. Also, real quick in Bleach News, there's a one shot about 75 pages in length coming out this Monday. So uh, a Bleach one shot uh, that, that takes place after the end of the main series so keep an eye out for that anyway going into the bad ish news after almost 30 years another iconic sega arcade is closing down this is by damien mcferrin for nintendo life 28 years ago in july 1993 the sega ikebukuro kigo opened in tokyo This sprawling nine-story amusement arcade has, over the decades, become popular with gaming mad tourists visiting Japan and has been the site of many location tests for new arcade machines. However, this September, the Sega Ikebukuro Kigo will close its doors for good due to a fixed-term building lease agreement coming to a close just as the building is due for renovation. The news follows the closure of Sega's Akihabara second arcade last year, which means that Tokyo has lost two of its most iconic arcade centers in quick succession. Um, It should also be noted that last year Sega sold off 85% of its location-based entertainment operations, and earlier this year split what remained of its amusement division from its video game business. But if you want to know more, you can click on the article and... Give Nintendo Life a look see. So yeah, this is a bummer because yeah. you know um, it it feels <laughs> like uh, physical media is dying a lot quicker than we expected. Uh, well, at least the ones that require people like crowds of people. Yeah, you know? there's that. <laughs> um, hopefully, like. They, they're selling off these things to collectors and or, or storing them properly so these things don't get lost to time uh, but yeah uh, okay next up is grand blue fantasy summer 2021 special live stream set for august 7th this is by gamatsu uh and the one and only sal romano reporting Okay, keep going. I'm going to be right back. Side Games will host the 2021 edition of its annual Grand Blue Fantasy Summer Special. Live stream on August 7th from 1800 to 2100 Japan Standard Time, the company announced. You will be able to watch it on YouTube. The broadcast will include the latest information on the Grand Blue Fantasy game, future developments, and much more with special guests. Uh, the presenters include Yuiko... No, Yuki, 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 Yuki. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. Yuki Ono, Grand and Lancelot voice actor. Emery Kato, uh, which is the Siro Karate voice actor. Nao Toyama, Liria voice actor. Tetsu Inada, Latvia voice actor. Asami Imai, Vira and Friday voice actor. Yoshi Hisa. 
Ya, Yoshihisa Kawahara, Tire and Nectar voice actor, Kanae Ito, Storm voice actor, Takuya Iguguchi, Van or Vain voice actor, Rika Tachibana, Yuisis voice actor, Ryotoa Osaka, Percival voice actor, Yuito Kimura, producer, and Tetsuya Fukuhara, the director. I'm curious to see if they will. Well, they say they're gonna talk about some games, but is it going to be like the that that big RPG that they had with、uh, Platinum Games? Because you know, Japan is notoriously tight-lipped about their game development, and unless it's time, you won't know what's gonna be happening.、Uh, so yeah,、um, hopefully. Hopefully, we'll see a, a hint of it soon.、Uh, next up, we have Fantasia Part 2 is almost done. This is by Jenny Lada for Silicon Era.、Uh, it is sounding like Miss Walker's Fantasia Part 2 might make its tentative end of 2021 release window. Hironobu Sakaguchi offered updates on the game's progress on Twitter. In one post, he shared a look at Cheryl's growth map. In the other, he confirmed that the second of the two Fantasia parts is almost done. First, here's a look at Cheryl's growth map in Fantasia Part Two. Sakaguchi shared images of both、uh, the Japanese and English versions of it. In it, people can apply SP to teach Cheryl skills, and some of the abilities sound like they will inflict status effects or debuffs. For example, she can learn Cloud or Sleep, or Cloud of Sleep. I'm sorry, dispel poison spores. Slow and absolute zero and attack down. There are also effects that will pass、okay, the helper, <laughs> like MP every turn one, and she can also learn some standard attacks abilities and spells like counter, night break, dark, darkness strike, and blizzard.、Uh, I just、uh, grouped the、uh, grand blue and the fantasia one together. So,、uh, oh, okay. Now it's just you with Earth Defense Force and Pokemon Red. Right. So. Um, next, uh, Earth Defense Force 4.1 Shadow of New Despair coming to Switch in 2022 in Japan. This is by Saramano for Gamatsu. D3 publisher and developer Sandlot will release a Switch version of Earth Defense Force 4.1 The Shadow of New Despair in 2022 in Japan, the company has announced. Earth Defense Force 4.1 The Shadow of New Despair first launched for PlayStation 4 in April 2015 in Japan. Followed by December 2015 in North America and February 2016 in Europe. A PC version was released via Steam in July 2016 worldwide. That was, I played the PS4 version. That was the first EDF game I played,、mm-hmm. and I really didn't like it.、Okay. And now I'm a huge fan of EDF because of Iron Rain. Oh, how to turn so, tables. Yes.、Um, Next up, Pokemon Red and Blue Bicycle Replica will appear in real life. This is、uh, from Silicon Era by Kai Stenbuck. The Pokemon Company revealed that it will produce a replica of the bicycle from Pokemon Red and Blue in real life. It will hand over the replica to a lucky winner in Japan through the sweepstake. I've never seen it without the extra、ad. sweepstake instead of sweepstick. Okay. Anyway. On the web page's fine print, the company noted that this replica is only a model. The eventual owner of the bicycle won't be able to actually use it for riding. So. Wait, what? It would, it's not. So it won't be the time and place for that? What's the. Po- <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> However, the bicycle will have special designs etched on its wheels, and the rims will feature icons inspired by Pikachu, Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle. The tires will also have a pattern based on the Pokeball, Great Ball, Ultra Ball, and Master Ball. In the first Pokemon titles on the Game Boy and in their Game Boy Advance remakes, the bicycle, I was going to say, and in Let's Go, but I'm like, I don't even think you get a bike in Let's Go. I don't remember. <laughs> the bicycle was also known to be sold for $1 million Pokemon dollars. However, the player could eventually obtain the bike for free by obtaining a voucher. The Pokemon Company will emulate that method in real life by giving away this bicycle replica through a sweepstakes. A lucky person residing in Japan can win the item by following the PokeTimes account on Twitter and posting a tweet with the specified Japanese hashtag by August 3rd, 2021. This also coincides with the official account reaching 1 million followers. Yeah, it says,、uh, yeah, Let's Go Pikachu and eBay did、mm. not feature the 
e Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee did not feature the bicycle as it was replaced with rideable Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you getting... <laughs> you can't ride that bike. Are you getting this replica? Because... I can't. It's Japan only. I mean, you could import it. I know, but I don't have any room for a bike that I can't even ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, that, there's that. Yeah. Uh, now, if it was functional, like, if it was one of the things where it was, like, you can't ride it, but the pedal still worked, maybe you can rig it into, like, a stationary bike yeah. or something. It would be cool if it came with headsets that had the bike tune when you're... <laughs> right. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Or like, or like there was a little speaker yeah, or something that, on it as you pedal. As you start pedaling, it starts playing. That'd be cool. Ne but next step. Yeah, no, it's just a thing to hang up on your wall, I guess, if you want to hang up bikes on your wall. Yeah. <laughs> To each their own. Next up, uh, uh, Final Fantasy XIV stage drop icon being changed due to trypophobia, uh, or trypophobia. This is by Jenny Lada for Silicon Era. The stage drop icon will look a little different in Final Fantasy XIV and Walker than initially expected. Director and producer Naoki Yoshida took to the lodestone to announce that the development team is changing the design after people with trypophobia expressed concerns over it. As a result, he revealed the new Sage job icon for Final Fantasy XIV. The issue was with the Nulits, the weapons the stage will use to fight in Endwalker. Originally, each one in the icon had a hole in its center to represent how the equipment would look. As Yoshida noted, people responded that the image made them uncomfortable or fearful. This is because trypophobia causes discomfort when looking at images with clusters of holes. For example, like a lotus pod. Since the Final Fantasy XIV stage job icon would end up appearing prominently, the team decided to slightly change it. You can click on the article for a full breakdown and full statement. Uh, yeah, that's a good change. Uh, next up, Square Enix financial report. I think it's very interesting because mm -hmm. you don't usually see people change stuff because of something like that like you know the arachnophobia stuff yeah it's it's slowly it's what you usually see slowly changing i think also due to accessibility advocates uh being more vocal uh in the industry saying like hey you know you could make this better not just for yeah. f for us but for everyone um like i didn't even know trypophobia was a I mean, I wasn't aware of it yeah, before it's, it's, reading an article. As with any phobia, it's a very rare thing, but it is a thing nonetheless. My sister has it, so... Yes. Uh, ah, I see. So, uh, I'm aware of it. I, I don't think I'm creeped out by it, but I can understand why someone would be. So, this is a good change right. all around. <clears throat> Next up, Square Enix Financial Report reveals Final Fantasy XIV sales increase. This is by Kazuma Hashimoto for Silicon Era. Square Enix has revealed that sales for Final Fantasy XIV have increased through its latest financial report. However, while sales for Final Fantasy XIV have continued to grow, um, operating income for the company has decreased. Additionally, its mobile sector continues to perform well and profit. The information for this financial report has gathered from was gathered from April 1st to June 30th, 2021. Shout out to 4Gamer. The report shows that sales for titles like Final Fantasy VII Remake and Outriders decreased in comparison to the previous year. However, Square Enix mentions that Final Fantasy XIV sales continue to remain strong. This is largely due to an increase in the number of players. And despite this, year-on-year -year sales for Square Enix are down by 6%, with operating income down by Okay, now I got it. Um, sorry, we, we got uh, more technical difficulties again. <laughs> really sorry about this, audience. 
Um, this is why we had to postpone this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, well. What were you asking me about Final Fantasy XIV? Uh, no, I wasn't asking so much as saying uh, that, you know, the... It, it it is doing well, like Final Fantasy fourteen is doing well, but it's it's probably not doing as well as we think it is. I should I really? should phrase that better. Like, um, you hear a lot about how the game is becoming more popular, how a lot more players are playing Final Fantasy, but. I think it might be them doing the free trial as opposed to dipping into like the added expansions or uh, more game time. So I think that's yeah. maybe reflected in the sales numbers, even though it is higher, excuse me, than expected uh, compared to last year, if I'm not mistaken. But it might not be as much as it could be. Um, also, if you compare Final Fantasy's total series sales with something like GTA V, maybe that explains why Square Enix is hesitant with making big moves con- uh, concerning Final Fantasy. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, that's just a thought. It, 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 doesn't, it, it, it doesn't have to mirror anything. It's just a thought. Uh, okay, next up yeah. is you with Hack GU. Yeah, ESRB rates hack dot hack do you last recode for Switch. This is by Saramano for Gamatsu. The Entertainment Software Rating Board is rated dot hack do you last recode for Switch, which first launched on PS4 and PC via Steam in November 2017. It includes dot hack do you volume one rebirth, rebirth volume two reminisce volume three redemption and the newly developed volume four reconnection. The, the Switch version has yet to be officially announced. Mm. It was rated... Yeah, well, it is rated, so... I mean, you could see it as an un- unofficial official announcement. Right. This is good. Yeah. More dot hack. It's not like they're... Um, I mean... Ignoring I can finally play it then. <laughs> you couldn't play it before? I could. I just never had really any interest. But now, you're, now you're more interested in trying it out. Yeah, it's portable, so it's easier for Hopefully me. Hopefully, it runs okay. I mean, it is a PS2. They are PS2 games. They should run okay. Yeah. Next up, we have Team Asobi launches official website. Teases most ambitious game yet in development. This is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. Astro's Playroom developer Team Asobi, a subsidiary of Sony Interactive Entertainment, has launched its new official website, which teases its most ambitious game yet. Is currently in development. We are a new and dynamic PlayStation Studio based in vibrant Tokyo, Japan. The website's About Us page reads, We create top quality games for players all of all ages on PlayStation. Our latest work are the critically acclaimed Astrobot rescue missions for PlayStation VR and Astrobot, uh, Astro's Playroom for PS5. We're currently hard at work on our most ambitious game yet. Uh, what do you think it could be? Gravity Rush 3. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Doubtful, but okay. Uh, Astrobot. Astro's. Racing. Astro's Big Adventure. Astrobus, Astrobot Astro Racing. Well, I mean, they said ambitious. I don't think a card game is ambitious. Astrobot Gravity Racing. Oh, well. Anti gravity racing. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Uh, Nippon Ichi Software launches new title teaser website featuring security camera footage. This is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. Nippon Ichi Software has launched a teaser website for a new title. The teaser website features security camera footage of a girl and what appears to be a figure of a person lying on the floor. The website will change little by little each day leading up to the game's oh, announcement. No. Uh. <laughs> Uh, sounds like a horror game, but okay. Guess we'll see. Next up is you with your Monster Hunter Stories 2. Board. Okay, so uh, next up, Monster Hunter Stories 2 is the most downloaded Switch game in July. Heck yeah. Uh, um, did, did you buy all those copies? 
No, I only bought one copy on Switch and one on PC, okay? <laughs> I believe you. But this is by Kazuma Hashimoto for Silicon Era. He has also been playing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Nintendo has released its official ranking of the most downloaded games for the month of July 2021, with Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin taking first place. A total of 20 games were listed for the month of July. The list includes Monster Hunter Rise and The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. However, this list is exclusively in Japanese. Additionally, specific numbers regarding the downloads were not disclosed. As mentioned previously, Monster Hunter Stories 2 has taken the top spot as the most downloaded game for the Nintendo Switch in July 2021. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD holds second place. Crayon Shinchen Ora to Hakase no Natsuyasumi then sits at third place on the list. Other notable titles include Ender Lily's Quietest of the Nights at spot 10 and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at spot 11. Monster Hunter Rise sits at spot 17. Previously, Nintendo shared that Monster Hunter Rise was the most downloaded title during the first half of 2021. Monster Hunter Rise has continued to climb the charts, earning a spot as Capcom's best-selling single-platform title. In July 2021, Capcom announced that sales for Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin had surpassed 1 million units worldwide. This included both downloaded and physical sales of the title. Breaking records all over the place. Yeah. Lucky you. Um, and then Monster Hunter Stories added to Apple Arcade Layton's Mystery Journey on the way. This is from Silicon Era by Jenny Lada. Uh, even more established games are heading to Apple Arcade. First, Monster Hunter Stories is immediately available on Apple Arcade for subscribers. This is the full version of the game with no extra purchases. In addition, eventually Layton's Mystery Journey, Catriel, and The Millionaire's Conspiracy will appear in the subscription services library. Um, so, will Monster Hunter Stories maybe see a Switch and PC port after this? Uh, I caution against hoping too much about that. I mean, it could always happen. It could, maybe, maybe the popularity of two is like, hey, maybe people will buy one now. <laughs> uh, but if the, the thing is, two and one are so mechanically similar. Uh, I, I don't know if if they'd be willing to go down that route. There are some features missing from the second one that the first one had. Yeah, but but still overall mechanically very similar. Yes. Um, but we'll see. More platforms is always good. I don't really, I'm not really into Apple Arcade, but you know, mm. another way to get it. I'm happy. Um, next up, Metabots S Mega Man Battle Network collaboration will appear soon. This is by Kite Stenbuck for Silicon Era once again. Imagineer announced that his mobile game Metabots S will have new collaboration content based on Capcom's Mega Man Battle Network series. The formal, former will create new Metabots inspired by three famous net navvies. This special event will be available for a limited time from August 5th to 19, 2021. The three net navvies featured are Mega Man EXE, Base EXE, and Roll EXE. The new Metabots, named after their Japanese names, are Rock Trance, Fortate, and Heart Roll. Those are definitely I'd names. Probably pronounce, maybe it's Fortate, I don't know. Rock Trance and Fortate will be available through Gacha. The Metabots collaboration event will also let players collect exclusive points to obtain Heart Roll and four tracks from the Mega Man Battle Network soundtrack. Capcom is celebrating the Mega Man Battle Network series' 20th anniversary in 2021. While the company has yet to announce any new games or ports, it uploaded soundtracks from the entire mainline series to digital music platforms like Spotify in April 2021. It also gathered licensing partners to release merchandise related to the series' anniversary. The collaboration will appear in Metabots S, which is immediately available for Android and iOS devices in Japan. The Mega Man Battle Network event will run from August 5th to 19th, 2021. Imagineer had also previously added collaboration content from Ghost in the Shell and Digimon into the Metabots mobile game. Okay, one, bring back Mega Man Battle Network. Two, bring back Metabots to the West. Yes, on both accounts. You, you keep seeing these... I keep seeing YouTubers talk about how great and underrated Metabots is. And I'm just like... And then there keep being people like, Yeah, I was the Metabots kid. And it's like, there are dozens of us. I wasn't the Metabots kid. <laughs> but it was, you know, on the list of... Things you enjoyed. You know, anime I grew yeah, up with yeah, that yeah, I liked yeah. watching. Uh, I have the Metabots... I got the Metabots uh, Game Boy Advance game. The Metabee version. Mm -hmm. 
for when the analog pocket comes okay, out. Okay, that's nice. And so I can decide if I like it enough, I might get the the import in the Switch collection. <laughs> So yeah. Um, next story is Beat from Jet Set Radio returns in Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. Uh, this is by Jenny Lotta for Silicon Arrow once again. Uh, I, I, Baby, Doctor, Mei Mei, Gon Gon, and Yan Yan won't be the only characters rolling around in Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. There will be cameo crossover appearances too. Sega announced the first one of them and it is Beat from the game Jet Grind Radio, aka Jet Set Radio. The Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania version of Beat from Jet Set Radio is a bit shorter and has a chibi appearance, as well as being inside a traditional Monkey Ball Ball. He's based on his original design from the Dreamcast game down to the headphones. Cool. More cameos. I think we're also getting, there was like leaks about Sonic be Sonic and Tails being in it as well. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, that's true. Uh, okay. That's cool. Next up, we have Fail Frame Sequel Prospects Raised by Koei Tecmo's Keisuke Kikuchi. This is by Kite Stenbuck for Silicon Era. Keisuke, uh, Keisuke, yeah, I'm saying that right. Kikuchi, the producer of Koei Tecmo's Fail Frame series, uh, discussed the prospects of a new sequel in the series in a new interview with Famitsu. His hope is that the performance of the upcoming ports of Fail Frame made in of Blackwater can help greenlight development for a new title in the franchise. Shout out to Ryo Kutia. Kutia. Okay. Famitsu asked Kikuchi about the possibility of a new Fatal Frame sequel being made based on reactions from the series reboot. Kikuchi responded with the following answer. Quote, I hope so. This time we are providing the Maiden of Blackwater ports as a 20th anniversary project. This becomes an opportunity for many players to play it, and we really want to connect it to the next title. End quote. So, I'm going to need all you horror fanatics to buy it. So, that's my PSA for the week. Next up, we have PlayStation 5 sales reached 10.1 million units worldwide. This is by Kazuma Hashimoto. Sony has revealed that PlayStation 5 sales have officially reached 10.1 million units worldwide. Additionally, revenue for the company is up in its first quarter. The latest financial report reveals that the PS Plus subscribers have also risen with a total of 46.3 million users currently subscribed to the service. However, the number of active users has decreased by roughly 10 million users. Shout out to Dom. In July 2021, Sony announced that the PS5 sales had reached 10 million units worldwide. This includes sales of both the digital and standard models uh, of the PS5. Sony also revealed information regarding the PS5 game sales uh, figures, and this includes a breakdown of how many copies Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart had managed to sell. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Sony's also about to break even or has broken uh, even uh, with regards to console uh, prices and how much they would be selling at a loss. So, yay Sony. Next up, Switch worldwide sales top 89, yeah, 89.04 million new Pokemon Snap tops 2.07 million. This is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. Nintendo Switch has sold 89.04 million units worldwide as of June 30th, 2020, Nintendo announced in its latest earning, uh, earnings release. A total of 4.45 million Switch hardware and 45.28 million software were sold during the three months ended June 30th. That's nice. Uh, you can see the top seven or top 10 best-selling first-party switch titles in the report if you click on it and uh, uh, numbers for the newest batch of first-party titles so give that a look see mm. um, yeah. if I'm not mistaken if you break it down it's about seven games per switch unit <laughs> uh, per switch unit or switch owner so that's not not bad it's a very healthy amount right uh, so yeah, uh, long live the Switch. Yeah. Next up, Duel Masters De Asobo for Switch, now available in Japan. Learn the ropes of Duel Masters. Speaking of things they should bring back to the West, mm. 
free-to-play Duel Masters tutorial game, Duma de Asobo, Duel Masters de Asobo, Duel Masters, not Duel Monsters, that's Yu-Gi-Oh, mm -hmm. is now available via Nintendo eShop in Japan. Duel Masters de Asobo first launched for iOS via the App Store and Android via Google Play in April. Uh, here's an overview. An app that teaches you how to play Duel Masters even if you do not have any cards. By learning the rules with familiar decks, you can learn how to play sufficiently even if you know nothing about Duel Masters. Use the latest starter decks and other cards to play against Joe Kirafuda and Jendal. Clearing these challenges will grant you access to read the Duel Masters manga. Oh, that's cool. Mm, nice. Um, but, yeah, it's a thing that I wish they would bring back to the... I know they tried bringing it back before, mm -hmm. and it just didn't really work out. But, yeah, you know, I love me some, some anime card games. Yeah, definitely up your alley. Uh, next up, Bubble Bobble for Friends for PC, subtitled The Baron's Workshop Adds Stage Creator. This is by Saramano for Gamatsu once again. The PC version of Bubble Bobble for Friends is subtitled The Baron's Workshop and will feature an exclusive new workshop mode that enables players to create and share their own stages. In this new mode, you'll be able to create your own unique stages by placing blocks, enemies, and the bubble carrying wind exactly where you want them. Publisher and developer Taito said, in a blog post, new blocks and enemies can be unlocked by playing through the game's story, and thanks to Steam's Workshop, you can share them with players everywhere and try out their stages too. It's due out on s for PC via Steam this summer. So hopefully the other versions get this update as well, but yeah. who knows. Because I only have the Switch version, so... But cool! Sta Bubble Bobble Stage Creator! Bubble Bobble Maker! <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Mario Golf Super Rush update to add playable Toadette, New Donk City course, and more today. Uh, that was five hours ago, so today, today. Uh, Friday, the 6th of August, 2021. This is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. Nintendo will release a free update for Mario Golf Super Rush later today that adds the new ranked match mode, playable character Toadette, course New Donk City, and improved motion controls, the company announced. Mario Golf Super Rush is available now for Switch. Uh, did you still play it? Uh, I I mean, I'm going to get back to it at some point. I haven't been playing it much. Oh, okay. But. Next up, Tales of Arise um, has fishing and farming and a demo is on the way. This is by Melindy Hetfeld for PC Gamer. Recently, Tales of Arise producer Yusuke, uh, Yusuke Tomizawa held a live Q&A and showed off some new features for the upcoming Tales RPG for the first time. The stream, which you can find on the official Japanese Tales YouTube channel in its entirety, alas, no subtitles, revealed some choice bits of info and includes some previously unseen footage, including a skit that you can watch above. There's a version with Japanese voice acting and English subtitles here. Well, you have to click on the article to see where to hear links to. Um, excuse me. Uh, let's see. Uh, where is the thing I'm supposed to be reading? Uh, there was news of a demo, but I can't find it now. Um, well, it... As the titles of the article says, it, the demo's on its way, so look forward to that. Um, are you uh, excited for Tales of Arise, or is it something you're still, like, kind of... Uh, has I mean, I'm excited that a demo's coming, mm. so I can try it out. I still... I planned on getting it. It is action combat, though. It's not turn-based as uh, Tales of Crest Tour, yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, okay. I know. Okay. Just, just wanted to make sure. All right, uh, next up is All You. All right, next is Konami is hosting Yu-Gi-Oh! Cross Duel closed beta, applications open. This is from MSN, weirdly, because I didn't see any <laughs> main, any uh, gaming news sites write about yeah. it. Um, this is by Kale Michael. During its most recent set of Yu-Gi-Oh! centric announcements, Konami revealed a new four-player battle game, I guess, that play... Oh, uh, and that players on iOS and Android in Japan and the United States will be able to participate in Yu-Gi-Oh! Cross Duel. Not a lot is known about the game outside of the title, its core concept, and the platforms it will be available on. 
However, the developers are ready to invite players in for an early test sometime in the next few months via closed beta. CrossDuel has opened applications for a closed beta test, with the deadline for signups begin being August 15th. Players who register will be notified by email somewhere between late August to early September if they gain access. In order to apply, you need to visit the CrossDuel website and enter your Apple App Store or Google Play Store registered email address. Konami is aiming to keep the testing pool small with 5,000 players listed as the limit for the first beta period. Before you decide to enter the beta, you will need a smartphone that is running on either iOS 13.0 or later or Android 6.0 or higher. Additionally, it is recommended that you have an iPhone XR or higher or an Android device that has a Snapdragon 845 or higher and 4 or more gigabytes of RAM. Because this is a beta test, not all of the features from the final game will be included in the test and there will likely be changes made prior to the official launch. For example, there won't be in-app purchases in the beta and players will be asked to send in reports about their experience with the game. You can read the full list of what will be featured in the beta, player requirements, and how to register on the official Yu-Gi-Oh! website. For now, it looks like the beta will run sometime in September or October. I did sign up, so we'll see. I figured you would. I mean, I'm not big on mobile <coughs> games, but I'm willing to try whatever this is. Though, is your phone going to be able to run it? It should be. Well... But if it's not, then it's not, <laughs> you know? Because th the processor is, in, is a Snapdragon 845, which isn't the newest, but it's still uh, a flagship processor, so... Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Mm. Uh, if, if I don't, I don't. But I figured, I'm, why not sign up anyway? Yeah. <laughs> um, last story, Megaton Musashi launches November 11th in Japan. New trailers released for the game and anime. Mecha RPG Megaton Musashi will launch for PlayStation 4 and Switch on November 11th in Japan for 6,974 yen, publisher and developer Level 5 announced. Pre-orders pre open today. The PlayStation 5 version, first announced in November 2020, is no longer mentioned on the game's official website. As previously announced, the Megaton Musashi TV anime will begin airing on October 1st. A Megaton Musashi official livestream dubbed Megaton Lab Volume 1 will air in late August and feature the latest information on the game and anime with the voiceover cast and general director Akihiro Hino. You will be able to watch it on YouTube. So yeah, Level 5 actually uh, releasing a game again. Fingers crossed. I mean, November is still a ways off. Uh, uh, I'm not jinxing it. I'm, I'm just saying um, be cautiously optimistic. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I don't know if I'm, I'm like I'm not sure if this is going to be localized, cause, especially in the U.S. Because stuff is iffy here about that. But at least it's releasing. Yeah. Um, if if it ever becomes localized, it's either going to be Bandai Namco or I'm thinking Nintendo. Nintendo, maybe. Yeah. Uh, is it? Wait, is it Switch and PC or no? It's PS4 and Switch. Okay. So yeah, it could be either one so of those. So Sega could also do it, because th they True. also have those ties. But we'll see. Well, I'm 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 yeah. happy. Also depends on how they run. That is true. Because the Switch version might run not run there that well. well we I'm know. happy Level Five uh, has been <laughs> managed to pull through. So uh, has some output. Yeah, we'll we'll <laughs> see how this pans out. But yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So. That was the last news story. We we're, we're gonna have to skip the main topic this week due to technical difficulties. Yeah, we don't want to jinx ourselves. Um, but if you want to ask us about uh, some of our favorite games that we might not play again, uh, or you know, send in your list or questions. or send know. in your picks for games you're not gonna touch but you love dearly. Uh, yeah, that, that could be a fun discussion. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, thank uh, you for preferably Japan developed yeah. games, but not not. It doesn't have to exclusively yeah, be that. We'll have fun. Uh, but thank you for listening. Uh, it's been a it's been a wild ride this week. Uh, be safe out there. Stay yeah. healthy. Stay safe. Sorry, we had to postpone that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, please, please, please get vaccinated if you can. Yeah. Uh, be kind to one another. Uh, wash your hands. Keep wearing your mask. Keep washing your hands. Shower. Uh, sh yes. <laughs> yeah, that's apparently. Yeah. Take it's a hot down. topic these days. Uh, look. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And look, we're not saying, you know, you still want to save water. Yeah, you but know. shower. So Preferably don't, shower. Don't, don't, 
you don't have to take super long showers, but you know, just still do it. Clean yourself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, thank you for listening. This has been Errol. This has yeah. been Jason. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Yep. Matinee.